Hey, friends, back with another episode of Strip Club Talk with Jade and Danny. Hi, Jade. Hey, how's it going? Good. We got a guest with us today. We do. Yeah, we got Alana with us. Alana is uh, also an entertainer that works with the two of us and also travels around the country and uh, uh, works with a lot of other uh, strip clubs as well. So, Alana, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Glad you came on today. Um, The reason I wanted to bring you on, we talk a little bit, Jade and I talk about uh, building your social media, building your brand, and you have got a brand, and the brand is uh, that, is it That Backstage Babe? Yes. Yeah, That Backstage Babe. You've got a YouTube channel, you've got a few things. Tell me a little bit about that and what you do with it. Um, Well, I started just kind of promoting myself on Instagram as one of the first girls at Diamonds, like right when it started being allowed and accepted, um, which I just found important because I would always work the same consistent days, excuse me, the same consistent days. So when you're promoting that you're going to be there and telling all the local people that, hey, I'm going to be in these days, come and see me over an amount of time, it becomes, it just builds. So Mm -hmm. it's helpful. I always have people in there for me. Big, uh, largely because of Instagram, I would say. Oh, that's good. How did you build your Instagram? Uh, How did you get more followers? Um, I just kind of, I decided to come out as a dancer, like on my real Instagram, but I changed my name when that happened. And so I started with about a thousand followers of people that I knew personally. I knew that I could reach, you know, just a bigger audience versus starting from scratch, but I was deleted. My Instagram was deleted two different times. So I did have to start from scratch regardless. So I guess you just kind of use the right hashtags to describe your picture. And, you know, you just kind of think of what's something that is attractive, that is part of my personality that I want to portray also online. But I think everyone's personality online versus in person is, of course, different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jay, do you have any questions for her? Um, I don't have any questions just because I remember her going through all of this. Because um, at the time, I was just like anti, because I'm just so old school. When we were, you know, when I was new and starting, it was like, oh, you know, people outside the club shouldn't know you at all. And then, so for the longest time, I was like, no, not me. I'm gonna not going to do that. And then I saw, like, I almost feel like, I know you said that somebody else had done it first, but I also feel like I would consider you one of the people who kind of pioneered that move too, because um, you had, like you said, a large amount of growth quickly. And then when I started seeing everyone and what they were doing, Um, I finally realized, like you said, you know, you portray yourself as, you know, who you are. And I know sometimes it's hard to like exactly do that, but I was thinking, you know what, Yeah. Yeah. why am I not doing this? Like you said, you always work a certain amount of days that you do. It's consistent. People know that you're going to be there, but what about those people who don't know? Like the promoting is important. And I finally was like, you know what? why wouldn't I want to let people know why I'm work when I'm working and when they can come see me? Um, so, you know, I've always, um, kind of looked up to you in that way. And I think it's awesome that you've always just been like, here I am. And so it's definitely you and a few others. I've definitely looked up to you in that way. And I see that, um, growth and it definitely encouraged me to get, get with the times, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, our, our home club is Diamonds Cabaret in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, that's where the three of us work together. Um, I worked at Diamonds for a, a long time, and then I left for a while. I left for about seven or eight years, and but I always followed Diamonds Instagrams and things, and that was the one thing I always noticed, especially Diamonds Facebook. Every time I turned on, there's Alana. You are like the, the face of the club, and that's I kept saying, wow, this girl, man. She, every, every ad, they've got Alana in here. They got her on the profile picture of the, of the Facebook and everything. So I said, man, I got to meet this girl. So, and I remember one time, it's a funny story. I came in on, on an, a day before I started to work there. And uh, one of the Joes was, uh, was DJing. And uh, he said, your name coming up on stage. And I said, I got to see what this girl looks like in person. She can't be as hot in person as she is in her pictures. And I walked out there and I said, holy shit, she is. <laughs> So 
So, I mean, yeah. So <laughs> what you have done, actually, what I'm the point I'm trying to make is, is what you have done is very successful and you you do a really, really good job at it. And I think more people should do that. And, you know, I mean, you volunteer for pictures. Anytime we need pictures, you are up there, you know, especially with uh, with our in-house photographer, Joe and stuff. You are right there. Uh, anytime I've wanted video uh, shooting for you, you're right there. So I think you're doing it right, Alana. You're doing it right. I appreciate that. I just feel like we are our own individual businesses. So if you're not, I mean, there's multiple aspects to every business. So us as independent contractors, it's crucial to market yourself in a certain way. And I mean, it's not like you're going to make your own billboard on the highway. So yeah. really all that's left is social media things. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, Alana, I do have something that I want to ask you for people who might be uh, watching the show who um, could be new or haven't stepped into the social media um, area, or if they have, they feel like they got stuck in a rut, like they're just not growing. Um, what is something you feel like you do when you kind of get to that like plateau? Um, there's a few different things. I think it's always like important to take your own time away from it because I think everybody gets stuck thinking, what do people want to see? Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to see anything specific. That's not the right question to be really asking yourself. To me, when I get stuck in that, I take a break. I step away, even sometimes for a couple weeks, sometimes a couple months, however long I need and I like refined what it is that I want to show off about my personality, about what I bring to the table, just naturally. Mm -hmm. Not looking for what someone's looking for. They don't know me. I'm the only right. one that knows me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, giving, you know, yeah, just, and sometimes I feel like people don't get the likes or the interaction that they want or that they're looking for because nothing is really shining through. It might be like a gorgeous picture or whatever, but if it doesn't like portray something special about you, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, it's just another girl on Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, and that's what makes it so hard. It's hard. I mean, I struggle with that. I think everyone struggles with that. So like, I don't know all the answers, but when I need to take a break, I just take a break and yeah. try not to like think. What about, uh, yeah, getting shut down on Instagram? There's that fine line. How far can you push it? And some people can push it a lot further than others. You know, I mean, I'll get flagged for putting a picture of a girl up in a bikini. Um, and then you look out there and you see somebody else with full nips showing and everything, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I, I don't have you figured it out yet. What where is that borderline of what you can show and what you can't show? I've had some really good tips from uh, just multiple like people and photographers throughout the years. And a few things that I've learned is you can't cover any body parts with emojis. The only thing that you can do is blur. Um, but really just trying to stay away from like fully nude pictures in general is better. And if you are going to be putting like risque things on there, um, you should make your profile 18 and older. So then any other Instagrams that are listed under 18 can't even see your profile. So then they mm -hmm. like are a little bit more lenient with you because they're like, okay, no children can see. Gotcha. Um, a few other things like you shouldn't put the hashtags that describe your picture in your uh, like label, like the very first like caption, you should add it as a comment. Oh, okay. Um, That's nice to hear. Just, yeah. Because I feel like I go and, back and forth with that and I never know. Yeah. I forget um, the correct word for it, but it's mm -hmm. like following their, oh, yeah. I'm drawing a blank. I, I don't know. Like algorithm or but, something that helps with there that? There we go. Okay. Yeah, the algorithm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it yeah. just like follows what you're supposed to do if you do gotcha. that. Also, if people are commenting on your picture, even if it's, I mean, just you see all the comments, it could be a heart. If you reply to it, that also does help because it's just more interaction on your photo. Mm -hmm. um, so it brings up your photo more when people are scrolling because there's more people commenting on it. 
Yeah. yeah. And that makes the that makes the person feel better too. I mean, I know when I sit there, I mean, you know, when I first got into all this, you know, I'd sit there and I'd say, Man, you're looking really beautiful. And then you get a thank you back. And especially if you get it from somebody that you don't know and you've never met, that mm -hmm. all of a sudden starts that connection. Now, some of those connections can be from somebody on the other side of the world, which is not gonna do you any good unless they're gonna, you know, cash up you or anything. But right. you yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> but it does. It it can, you know, as I say, when I was in in diamonds that one time, I said, Oh, Alana, I got to see what she looks like. And, and that was because of your social media. Um, getting back to hashtags, uh, is OnlyFans the hashtag? Is that going to get you um, in trouble, flagged or anything? I, some people say yes and some people say no. What do you think? Check out my OnlyFans. I don't, I don't do that because I don't want to risk it. And mm -hmm. I just kind of... Lexi is actually the one that told me this tip. She told me that every picture that you post, you should try to describe to a T as to just what you see. Just very simple, like, what do you see when you look at the picture and hashtag those. And when you put hashtag, you wait for the word to come up. Obviously, I think most people know that. But if you would just type in the word and you, even if it was a big hashtag with 3.2 million tags, if you didn't select that one it won't go under those tags mm. but i think a lot of people know that part yeah 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 um yeah. uh, jade anything else on social media i got a couple other questions for alana but i want to if it let um, me finish up here if you have any more so i did take some classes and i know when you do that you don't take everything away from it but i do remember um with hashtags like you said how you type it in and then you see it pop up and you choose it I do remember um, them talking about sometimes it's also beneficial to choose ones that don't have as many. Like, so you see the first one that's like, you know, a million, and then you go down and you see something with like, you know, 500,000 tags on that specific one. And it might be like, say you're saying like, um, hot girl, like whatever you see it and it's got like the most. And then there might be something underneath it that's like hot girl summer. And it's a little bit more like specific and it has a little bit mm -hmm. less. Um, sometimes I think that helps your reach a little bit because not as many people are looking at that and just scrolling past it quickly. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's helpful, but I think that that's something that I remember from one of the classes. Yeah, I, I think took. It, that makes sense because then it's like your picture kind of gets lost in the millions right, of exactly. others, but like. Mm -hmm. A few hundred but thousand is just left. Yeah. 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 And it's still good to tag those big ones, obviously, because, you know, yeah. the chance that you yeah. are getting viewed by that many people is still good. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, I, I get yeah, on TikTok. I get on TikTok for the club and, you know, it's one of my recruiting tools is, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of things where we're looking for new entertainers and stuff. And with TikTok, I, I hashtag Columbus girls, Dayton girls, uh, Cincinnati girls, Columbus babes, Cincinnati babes, uh, you know, and all that. And that's where I seem to get a lot of uh, good reaction for people that are either Columbus babes, Cincinnati babes, or people that are looking for Columbus babes, Cincinnati babes. Right. Um, I, I tend to have a lot of luck with that on, on TikTok, especially. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay, well, Lana, we want to pick your brain because we got you on here, and I want to take advantage of this as much as I can. Uh, Jade and I have talked to, on a few previous shows about uh, tips that we would give new entertainers. Uh, you know, just starting out, first night, second night. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do poll work. I don't know what to say to customers. Um, and I know you are very, very helpful to the new entertainers that come into the system. So, what what kind of tips would you give them? I pretty much tell all the new girls the same thing. And I start with your confidence. I think any veteran dancer will start with that because that is the most important. You don't have to have the best body. You don't know. You don't have to know how to dance. You don't have to know how to touch the pole. You don't need to know anything. But if you mm -hmm. go up there and you're like not scared or you're at least faking it till you make it, that's what it's about because that's attractive. Like whether it's a man or a woman watching, you can easily put yourself in your sh in their shoes as the customer or as the, you know, viewer. And nobody wants to see somebody that's terrified. You feel bad and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But when you see someone that's like, Hey, like I, what up? And like smiling <laughs> and having a good time. 
I mean, that's attractive for anybody to watch. Mm -hmm. and, so, Alana, that's the first tip. Okay, go ahead. I was going to ask you about uh, conversation starters. What, how you start a conversation with a customer? Um, I actually did my first two episodes, um, and this is like one of the main ones is speaking and introducing yourself and talking to yourself, approaching tables. It's huge. I mean, it's your first interaction with them other than them seeing you across the room or on stage. Um, but when I walk up to a table, I am sure to introduce myself to every single person at the table. If you leave somebody out, I mean, that could have been your person. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. So a lot of girls, again, it's the confidence thing. They're scared to just come go up to a table and everyone knows how that feels, but you just have to talk yourself out <laughs> like, or at least fake it. Like you're there to make money. You're not there to impress anybody. Letting what you caring about what other people think about you slowly withers away until you're fully like blossomed into yourself there. Mm -hmm. And at every new girl, I mean, I was terrified. Everybody is, but introduce yourself to everybody. Um, ask open-ended questions. Don't ask yes or no questions. When you ask a yes or no question, you know, that's it. They're, they're not interacting with you. It's just a quick, like, let me get the straw out of my face. Mm. But, um, yeah, I try to, I try to ask questions like, are you celebrating something? Have you been here before? What'd you do this weekend? How was your Friday? Did you work all week? Like just, you know, more specific than just like, Hey, what's your name? Um, and I find it very important to, this is just my approach. Everybody's different and every, everything works differently for different people. But I like to keep it classy at first. If you're sitting on someone's lap, straddling a guy at first, you see the girls do that. It's just you're you're setting yourself up for that type of interaction the whole time. Mm -hmm. You don't want to start there. You don't want to start there. <laughs> so yeah, agreed. That's important. <laughs> yeah. start Alana, there. you are also an, an outstanding pole performer. How did you learn to do pole? Did you take classes? Was that all self taught? Did you watch videos? Um, I just got a pole in my house and just practiced until I like got down a little routine. There are like some tricks that I want to change or add in, but you know, it's just, it's practice. That's it. No, I didn't, anybody that has worked there, Jade, I'm sure you remember. I didn't know how to do anything on the pole. I just taught myself on mm -hmm. YouTube and Instagram. Yep. I remember. Yeah. Um, let's see, Alana, do you have anything else you want to add before we, uh, we end the show? Um, if you're thinking about dancing, just remember that it truly is dancing and wearing your confidence is the most important aspect of it. Okay. Jade, any final thoughts or any final questions for, for Alana? A question. How would you, how would you say someone who decides to start dancing? Um, I don't know. <laughs> no, just I was, I don't even know what I was going to ask. It started out pretty good. Um, I was thinking back to the social media stuff. Like if someone's nervous about doing the social media and they're, thinking about doing it all in one, like they want to start dancing and they want to make sure they're promoting themselves the right way, but they're nervous about their people, like their family and friends. What would you say is the best way to go about doing that? You're going to have to start from scratch and start from, you know, don't have your real name intertwined in it in any way, but it's always, it's a possibility and hiding that it's a stressor in itself. So, you know, you can always go the option and a little bit of promotion is better than no promotion, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Right. So no, I agree. I, like, even if you wanted to not have your face in there, blah, 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 like mm -hmm. there's things you can do, but 
having your face, of course, always helps. People want to know who they're looking oh, yeah. at, mm-hmm. you know, and all those factors just add more and more help, but yeah. anything is better than nothing. Right. When I, I remember you saying like earlier, you're like, you know, what you, what people think about you and you worrying about that eventually just goes away. And I think that that's something you kind of have to keep in the back of your mind when you're doing this, even if you're somebody who doesn't promote on social media, that someday somebody somewhere that, you know, may possibly find out and you have to just know going into it, that that's something that is a possibility. You have to learn to let that go. You do. And I think it's everyone's natural want and reaction to want to accept explain themselves yeah. and explain and I've been guilty of it still yeah, still catch myself doing it sometimes especially you know an old, old girlfriend not even a guy who just you know you have this certain connection with a certain relationship with and then she just you know all of a sudden brings up the co- or the topic and you're just like oh, how do I truly convince this girl that I'm not in there doing more than dancing mm-hmm. and and like I said and that's just you know it's part of it you sometimes you do it and other times I'm like I don't need to explain myself to anybody you can think what you want to yeah. think about me uh-huh. but then other times I'm like I'm literally actually close enough with this person and I want them to actually understand how I can do this so I don't mm-hmm. mind it's not like a I'm begging for your acceptance explanation it's like mm-hmm. girl let's talk about it so you can understand mm-hmm. and nine times out of ten I'll get like I have college the girls that I went to college with and high school but that my high school is far away but college mostly who never considered dancing and I'll have that heart to heart with them and they'll be like wow like I actually think I want to try that yeah be like yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. well back back to what you were saying a second ago about you know what happens when people find out one of the tricks and it's never a guarantee that you can hold that off uh and Jade and I talked about this on a previous show is if you have a stage name page and then you have a real name page, don't invite the same people because when you invite the same people, they're going to show up on your people you may know. And all of a sudden, oh, you know, that's one of the biggest ones. Keep those two separate. And if you are going to start a social media uh, platform or a name across all platforms, if you can do it, pick the same name across all platforms. That way you yes. don't have to say on TikTok, I'm this on Instagram. I'm this because sometimes, you know, you start them at later dates and that name isn't available. Uh, you know, you can find me at DJ Danny Myers on every single platform. Uh, you know, it's the same name across. And that's one of the biggest tips that I would give somebody starting out. That's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. definitely important. Well, Lana, man, we want to thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. And uh, hopefully you'll come on again sometime in the future because we can always pick your brain. You're a great guest. Yeah, you add a lot to it. Thank you. Jade, of course, I love doing these with you every single week. And we got to keep doing that. Now, if you haven't already done so, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. And I'll get Alana's YouTube channel going across the bottom there as well on uh, on one of my lower thirds. So you can follow her as well. And uh, we put these shows out every Friday at 3 p.m. So uh, Eastern time. So follow us, like it, smash the bell, all that stuff. Strip Club Talk. Thanks, girls. Thanks. Thank you.